Okay, testing one, two, testing. Looks like everything's working along pretty well here so far. If you're just joining us on Periscope and Twitter, we are live as far as I can see for right now. So if you have any plans for questions, please stick around and keep an eye as to what's going on with us here at News Channel 3. Got a lot to talk about this evening, unfortunately, with, again, a lot of activity going on into and around the area for the next couple of days as we watch what goes on with the remnants of Hurricane, what was Hurricane Harvey heading our direction. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Give me two shakes while I invite all of our Facebook friends into the mix and show them a little bit more about what's going on for this evening. Hopefully we're not having any more audio problems for tonight, if everybody can hear me. Testing one, two. Yes, I know I need to get a better microphone installed on this, but this will do for right now. And so far, it looks like audio is working pretty well, so we'll go ahead and get started. Time is just about 21 minutes past 8 o'clock, and thanks for everybody for joining us for our latest weather edition of our edition of our Weather Overtime video blog. Glad to have you with us. If you have any questions or concerns, right above me in the blue bar up there is austin.onic.wreg.com. If you have any questions, concerns, you can contact me that direction as well. If you've got pictures, we'd love to see them. More of our weather forecast, Storm Tracker 3. S should be available at wreg.com slash weather. Current forecast again right here, and as you can read, we're going to be looking at some very breezy winds coming up within the course of the next couple of days as what's left of Harvey moves across this area. Now finally degraded to a tropical depression, but it is still causing a lot of problems out there and more problems coming our way within the course of the next couple of days where it comes to a lot of wind out there and the possibility of severe weather as well. We'll talk about that. Notes there in the, in the forecast right there, again, four inches plus of rainfall in about the next 36 hours. So we're going to be talking about the possibility of maybe some flash flooding as well well into parts of the area. If you're just joining us on Facebook, welcome. We'll take a look around and see what's going on across much of the Mid-South for tonight. Diane Wingo, are we getting rain? Not immediately, but that will be coming our way a little bit later on. St. Francis in Cordova, got a nice view for tonight of a little bit of clear skies through the clouds out there, but not seeing everybody with clear skies for tonight. Again, the possibility of getting some more rainfall out there could be a problem for later on. Diane Wingo, cult, yes, possibly. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. In the meantime, again, taking a look out across the area for tonight, what we've got is mainly just the possibility of some scattered light showers taking place out there, and that's mainly across portions of northern areas of Mississippi, south of Holly Springs, into and around the area of Abbeville, just between there and the reservoir, down between there and I-55. That's where we're seeing the best possibility of some rainfall at this point in time, so that's going to be, again, what we're looking at for the possibility of heavier rainfall for the time being. We've got a little bit more heading our way and some more areas of showers back over over across Helena, West Helena in Arkansas, and looking again at a few lightning strikes out there possible. Doesn't look like too much going on at this time, but that's in Arkansas. We'll put this into motion and show you more about this. Again, you can stay tuned for more with Storm Tracker 3S coming up live on News Channel 3 at 10, and Jim Jaggers will have more details on your complete forecast at this point. Showers starting to lift northward over across much of northeastern Arkansas and southeastern Arkansas and northern Mississippi, I should say. This is, again, the leading edge of the rainfall we have seen across the area for right now, and this is what we're going to be seeing a lot more of in the near future. So if you'd like to see more about what's going on again with Storm Tracker 3S, you got to see it live on News Channel 3. You can pick up interactive radar here at wreg.com slash weather, and of course we'll have more on what's going on with the forecast coming up in just a little bit. Sissy Karakurt, welcome to the show. Hope the goats are doing well. Verlin Todd, what does it look like about 5 to 6 a.m. tomorrow? We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Uh, Brittany for, where did it go here? Brittany Garrett Davis. Yeah, I got to reload. We had some audio problems earlier. We got those fixed, I hope, at least according to the audio meter on here. It looks like some sound is getting out there because I'm no good at doing pantomime weather anymore. D. Leach, welcome to the show from Jersey, assuming that's New Jersey out there. I'm not too sure if that's uh, there's a Jersey, Tennessee. I'm not familiar with that one. Bozo Wolfolk, how much rainfall is Senatobi going to get? We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Diane Wingo, yes, we'll talk some more about the rain in in just a little bit. 
so stay tuned for more on that. Uh, D. Leach, according to your weatherman, you got some thunderstorms headed up by you tonight and tomorrow. That's very true. We'll talk about that as well. And Betty Smith, thanks for tuning in for tonight. Let's go ahead and get into it and show you more about what's going on. If I could remember to load the proper uh, display here, it might help by just a little bit. Give me just two seconds to get everything taken care of, and there we go. Visible satellite taking a look at what we have seen in the last 24 hours. There's the swirl that was again tropical storm. It is no longer a tropical storm, thankfully, after several days. It is now a tropical depression, but it has still got a lot of energy in the atmosphere, and that's what's going to kick off more problems for us. Here's what we're looking at again right here. All that moisture coming in from off the Gulf of Mexico, headed right up over across Mississippi and Alabama and Louisiana, right into the Mid-South area. So this is just the leading edge of getting in more showers and thunderstorms out across much of the area for the rest of the evening. Billy Franklin, need to uh, readjust and uh, reload your page to get the information on there. Otherwise, Again, audio out there uh, should be, again, reload. We had some audio problems earlier, but taking care of this for right now. Uh, my PR department and tech crew in the other room, Melissa Onik, thank you very much for the uh, sound check on that one. Nathaniel Evans, how bad are we going to get it in Batesville, Mississippi? We'll talk about that in a little bit. Covington, Tennessee, Laura Fleming will show you more about that in just a little while as well, and more details on that in the forecast in just a little bit. But this right here, beautiful view from up in space, but no Nowhere close to that down into around Houston, Texas. And there's more problems for Houston. We'll talk about that uh, in just a second. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and show you what's going on. Currently, again, we've got what's left of Harvey making its way in over the southeastern parts of Texas, right over Louisiana. That's the circulation area, and that thing's going to be moving right up, rotating its way into the Mid-South as we get into around the next couple of days. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Farther out into the Atlantic, we now have a new tropical storm. Irma has just formed, and if this is something that you are going to be traveling to the Bahamas, Florida, or the East Coast in the near future, this is something that you're really going to have to pay attention to because it looks like it's going to be following mainly a westerly course, but this could be a bit of a problem as we get into the course of the next couple of days uh, toward the end of next week. That could be something to take a look at there, so definitely want to stay tuned for News Channel 3, but that is several days away. There's little, if anything, really going on out across the area there. Now, one other thing to talk about at this point in time, and just what they wanted to hear, I'm sure, down into around Florida and the Gulf of Mexico, the storm prediction Center and the National Hurricane Center. <sighs> Always great to have great news on stuff like this, but looking down into and around the area of the southern Gulf, right around the Bay of Campeche, we have another disturbance developing. Not great on this one, 20% chance of development, but look at the information that you notice right here. It could develop more rainfall right along the Texas and Louisiana coastline. So if you're planning on heading Back to Texas, maybe you're in town taking shelter from the storm here in the Mid-South. If so, welcome. Hope everything's going well. But unfortunately, we may have more trouble brewing on the horizon with this one. It does not have a name yet. It's just a disturbance. But once again, this could be another storm that affects the Houston area in about the next five days, five to seven days or so. So this is, again, something to pay attention to to see what may be going on here. It is not a storm yet, but it could stir up more problems. This area of the Gulf is well known for developing storms at this time of the year or so, and especially as the waters of the Gulf of Mexico are about as warm as bathtub out there, about 85, 90 degree water. That's great forming territory for these storms to get going, so something to think about there. Alice McGowey, thanks for coming on through and watching the show. Diane Wingo, I'm glad for you to stop on by as well. Edith Billings, man, thank you very much for dropping on by at this time. National Weather Service in Memphis, again, the hazards page is filled with a lot of information at this time. Life-threatening flash flooding possible with, again, the possibility of some showers and thunderstorms out there, heavy rainfall at times. They're saying about four to eight inches. There is the possibility, it's slim, but it is there a possibility of some places getting six to 12 inches of rainfall 
And that's, again, going to be in isolated spots. Widespread, it's going to be kind of like a chocolate chip cookie. The widespread is going to be the dough, 4 to 6 inches. 6 to 12 inches is going to be kind of like the chocolate chips. It's going to be every once in a while. It's not going to be for everybody. But it is going to be falling mainly east of the Mississippi River. We'll show you where in just a little bit. We've got severe thunderstorm potential out there in the red box. Again, this is going to be something that we're going to be uh, taking a look at there. D. Leach uh, saying it's going to the Leeward Island, Islands first. That's true. Uh, after that, it, the models kind of split a little bit. But again, just a widespread warning for anybody going to anywhere between the Bahamas and, say, Washington, D.C. to pay attention to the forecast. It's not going to be here immediately, but Irma could be a threat toward the end of next week, and we want to keep an eye on that and make certain anybody who's traveling knows about that as well. In the blue box, we also have uh, information from the National Weather Service now about a wind advisory that has been posted for the entire Mid-South area. Okay, no idea why my graphic just split right there for a second. Apologies on that. What we're looking at, again, is the potential for, again, breezy conditions out across the Mid-South. We'll show you how much coming up in just a little bit for more details. Let's go ahead and run the numbers for you and show you a little bit more about what we're going to be seeing out here as we get into the course of the rest of the next couple of days. Best chance of anything involving rainfall will again be coming our way gradually tonight and making its way into and across much of the Mid-South. But as we go into overnight, we are looking at the potential for nearly 100% chance of rainfall for, again, the area in and around the Memphis metro area. East Arkansas, North Mississippi, and that's just for tonight. Now, how much are we actually looking for out there? Well, if I get my computer to agree with me here for just a little bit. Uh, chances of rainfall, again, doesn't look like much at this time. The heaviest is going to be right along the I-40 corridor with about uh, two-thirds to eight-tenths of an inch around Jackson, two-thirds of an inch around Memphis and the metro area, East Arkansas picking up even more than that. Let's get into tomorrow. High temperatures, not that that high thanks to the clouds and rainfall coming our way. And that also is going to be seeing temperatures in the mid to high 70s. Chances of rain, basically everybody, Jonesboro to Jackson, Tupelo to Clarksdale, to Forest City, to Dyersburg, to Memphis. Everybody's going to be picking up chances of rain throughout the entire day. We'll time it out coming up here in just a little while to give you more details on what we may be looking for. Chances of rain, this is where it starts getting a little bit on the scary side out there. This is where, again, the colors really start to ramp up. And this is for about the 12 hours between about roughly 3 o'clock in the morning through about... 3 to 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Notice we're talking about 3 to 4 inches of rainfall on here through tomorrow, during the day, into tomorrow afternoon. So sloppy travel, slow travel possible, very heavy rainfall for some sections of the Mid-South, and that's going to be something that we're going to have to watch again very carefully for the potential of flash flooding. Now, let's go down a little bit farther. Excuse me, I have to zoom out here the way my computer works on this thing. Let's take a look at wind gusts coming our way. Matter of fact, let me just put this all the way up here so everybody on Facebook has a better idea. You don't need to be staring at my ugly mug for this the entire time. Taking a look at the winds out there as we go into the next about uh, 24 hours through about Thursday, wind speeds, again, with this system are going to be making their way our direction. And so what we're going to be seeing is as this area of low pressure approaches, the winds are first going to be out of the east. Now watch what happens as I go a little further into the next about 24 hours. It really starts to pick up by about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, 14 miles an hour in Jackson, 8, well technically this is in knots, but you get the idea, 19 in Jonesboro, 14 in Clarksdale. Going to about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, kids getting out of school, travel home. This is just the sustained winds. Notice right here, right in this area down to the lower portion of your screen, there is a decent circulation. Winds out of the southeast here, northeast over here, and then circulating back around again. That is the center part of Harvey, just about ready to come through the area. Now, like I said, this is just sustained winds that we're taking a look at across much of the Mid-South. Let me back out here for just a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Now, let's go to um, wind gusts at this time and show you more about that. In the blue colors, that's where we start getting over about 20 miles per hour. Uh, in the green colors, that's where we start getting to about 30 miles per hour. And as you can see, we've got a decent amount of wind coming on through. And that really starts to pick up again right about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. 
And that's where we're going to be seeing uh, winds quite possibly pushing 40 miles per hour wind gusts into tomorrow afternoon and evening, about the time you head home from work or school. Uh, Bozo Wolfolk, raining a bit in Senatobia. Thank you very much for the weather report. Victoria Fondren, welcome again from Sarah slash Strayhorn. Diane Wingo, storms could be possible. We'll talk about severe weather in just a little bit. And Jennifer Pruitt, hope I'm saying that right, uh, from the Brownsville area. So far, the weather appears to be on the decent and pleasant side there. Glad to hear about that. Now, let's get into Thursday night and go back to the winds and show you what's going on. Here it is, right over the Mid-South area, this big, notice the wind barbs that you see here. Winds here out of the southeast going north into Tennessee. Winds out of the northeast starting to turn to the north over parts of eastern Arkansas. And right in there, passing right over I-55, Senatobia, Coldwater, Oxford. Oxford, Abbeville, south of, say, Byhalia. This is where the core of what's left of Harvey is going to be passing on through, and that's going to be stirring up a lot of breeze. Now, the numbers you see on here, 20 in Memphis, that's in knots, but it's close enough to miles per hour that it really technically makes no difference. 17 miles per hour in Tupelo, that's at about 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Wind gusts at this time, we start to see that area right back around here. There could be a semi-calm space taking place right as that core goes over, which means it may be a lot less breezy in Oxford than it will be in Memphis or Clarksdale because the winds will be swirling around this particular area. And some of those winds between Dyersburg, Jackson, uh, Nutbush, Covington, Ripley, north of Millington could really be picking up as that storm passes on through. And that's going to be at about 7 o'clock tomorrow night. And we're talking about 35 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts coming on through for this tomorrow evening. This is going to be, again, where we see the heaviest part of it. Uh, Lauren Alvera, Walls, Mississippi, not specifically in the middle of it, but you're going to be close enough to the uh, center of circulation at this time as that system comes on through. It won't be exactly over over walls, but it will be very close and passing mainly south of the metro area, but again, some very breezy winds out there. And also, again, some very heavy amounts of rainfall. This graphic here is showing the amount of rain that we're expecting into tomorrow, ending at about uh, midnight tomorrow night. And that's on top of that other graphic that I showed you, right into around Jackson, Dyersburg, uh, up to around Paris, Union City. Uh, this is going to be the potential of the heaviest rainfall by far. Inch and a third in Memphis. North Mississippi, less of a chance of rainfall as this whole thing lifts on out of the picture, heading on up to the north and to the east. But we will continue to see, again, some very heavy amounts of rainfall coming on through. And again, that's on top of everything that you saw on the maps for here going into Thursday afternoon. So some areas of the Mid-South in about the next 24 to 36 hours could be looking at the potential of some pretty heavy rainfall out there. Very heavy, in fact. Now, again, nowhere near what Houston proper has gotten over the last couple of days, but it is going to be uh, just really heavy rainfall in some locations. So expect delays. Expect the possibility of getting uh, needing to go a different route just to be on the safe side. And expect the possibility of accidents starting tomorrow morning and going into the rest of the forecast. Now, big question, when is all this going to be getting out of here? Let's go to Thursday night and show you those wind speeds again. As that core rotates out of the Mid-South area, by the time we hit... Whoops. By the time we hit about uh, 10 o'clock, 1 o'clock p.m., 1 a.m. Friday morning, that area of rotation goes spinning its way back over to around Jackson, north of Corinth, and then heads on out of the picture as the winds begin to die down. But until then, Thursday night into Friday morning is going to be a very windy overnight. Now, going into Friday... High temperatures a little warmer. Rainfall, yes, but then that will be leaving the area, heading on off to the east and taking most of that rainfall on with it. And the winds will be breezy coming in on the northwest side. Whoops, hang on a second. Coming in on the northwest side of that area of low pressure, which is going to be way over here someplace. And those winds will be wrapping around that, so it'll be bringing in some nicer, hopefully drier air, 70s and 80s for highs on Friday. 
I'm good with that, but at least the chances of rainfall at this time will be leaving the area and gradually coming to an end by the time we hit Friday night. Heading into Saturday, high temperatures again, not too bad, upper 70s to lower 80s, and there will be an isolated chance of a shower or thunderstorm, looks like back toward the Tennessee River, and then taking a quick peek into Sunday, highs in the mid 80s, and not much of a chance of a shower or thunderstorm uh, out that direction. Uh, for those of you looking for severe weather, we'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Here's what we're looking for again into the timing of this overnight in the gray area that you see here. That is again the National Weather Service uh, showing the nighttime hours, daytime tomorrow morning starting again between about 6 and 7 and the chances of rain stay with us overnight in the green bars here going from late tonight into early tomorrow morning. And then the red is where we see the possibility of thunderstorms. Notice the rain really ramps up just past midnight tonight and continues right on in through most of Thursday. That includes, again, the possibility of thunderstorms out there. And then finally starts to get a bit of a break. The thunderstorms knock off by about sunset uh, or early sunrise Friday morning, and then the rainfall eventually tapers off as well, but it's going to take a while before we get rid of all that out there. The Weather Prediction Center is showing, again, the best possibility of heavy rainfall and flash flooding into and around uh, the West Tennessee area now, just to the northwest of, again, the possibility of going north and east of the metro. That is what you're looking at right now. This is, again, a weather graphic depicting possible flash flooding, the best target for it for right now. We'll take a look at severe weather coming up here in just a second, so more on that in just a little while. Rainfall, again, these, this is just taking a look at about the next 36 hours. And notice that target, that's why you saw that last map, uh, five inches around Dyersburg, Jackson, just north of around, say, Bolivar. That's going to be the heaviest of the heavy right into West Tennessee. That's the way it looks like right now. If you live in northern Mississippi or eastern Arkansas, I would not let your guard down on this. I would pay very close attention to what's going on with rain and flash flooding and be prepared to take alternate routes just to be on the safe side. Again, to be watching where you're going and to be prepared for changes like this. Now, the National Weather Service has issued, again, flash flood watches in effect for, again, a good portion of the Mid-South area. Uh, that's the area that you see shaded in, whoops, that's not supposed to be there, uh, shaded in green for most of the Mid-South. The areas that you see in bright green are flood warnings, which are going into effect for area rivers, creeks, and streams. This does include, it looks like, the Wolf and the Lusahatchee. Uh, also, again, stretching out maybe the Nankana out there and also for other locations as well. All this information, if you'd like to know more about what's going on with the rivers, it's all available from the National Weather Service. All you have to do is go to their page and click on the rivers and lakes graphic for more information as what's going on. Uh, follow the hydrology report and you can get more information. This one about the Mississippi River showing again what it looks like out there. It's very low and expected to drop. It looks like this forecast is not taking into account what's going on with the upcoming tropical storm activity, but this is something that we'll be watching nonetheless. And all this information, again, available at weather.gov slash MEG. That's from the National Weather Service in Memphis. Also, you can go to water.weather.gov for more information about that. All right, severe weather. Everybody's asking about that. Let's answer a few questions on that. Tonight's threat is, again, going to be down to the Gulf of Mexico. There's a good risk, a slight risk, uh, down around Jackson, Mississippi, and back into the southeastern corner of Alabama. Now, the green area, marginal threat, less of a threat, but still likely. In the pale green area, that is looking at the potential of just thunderstorms. Now, that is, again, the threat for tonight, and that was issued several hours ago. The threat for tomorrow has really expanded when it comes to, again, a slight risk category for northeast Mississippi and a small part of southwest Tennessee, mostly from the Mississippi River eastward over into Middle Tennessee, North Alabama, and northwestern parts of Georgia. So the focus for severe weather is going to be in part of the Mid-South area. It does seem, though, that as this storm system again makes its way out and to the northeast, as that spin takes place, the main energy is going to be taking place here, and that's where we're going to see the best possibility of thunderstorms. Main threat is, of course, going to be heavy rain leading to flash flooding, but we also cannot rule out the possibility 
possibility of isolated tornadoes in parts of the Mid-South area. So that is where we're going to be seeing a lot more problems uh, coming on through tomorrow. So we have to be ready for the potential of isolated tornadoes. It happened down in Texas, and it happens with these storms coming on through. And I'm just going to use this as a good example. That when these storms uh, turn, as they turn, they go faster on the inside and a little slower on the outside. The difference between those two things spinning that quickly, it's kind of like taking a pencil or, uh, in this case, a hastily arranged straw. One area is moving a lot faster, one area of winds, and the storm is moving a lot slower, and that causes the straw to basically rotate, and you start lifting that up into the atmosphere, and that's where you start getting things like updrafts that can lead to things like tornadoes. So that is why we have to pay attention to what's going on with uh, things about severe weather, especially after a storm like this. It may have lost a good deal of its punch. But we still have a lot of concerns on this. Nothing to panic about. That is the most important thing to remember right now. Being prepared is the best thing you can possibly do. Knowing where to go when severe weather hits at work, school, place of worship, shopping, anything like that, knowing the best shelter in case a tornado warning is issued, that helps you cut down on fear, panic, and confusion. Knowing, again, that you have batteries in your weather alert radio that you have multiple different ways of getting your warnings uh, through your cell phone, through a weather radio, off of regular uh, social media on TV. Don't rely on just one source. Have several of them available. Especially keep it tuned to the weather experts, and we'll be keeping a very close eye on this uh, as we go into tomorrow. And that's going to be the main thing we're going to be taking a look at. So again, this is going to be the time to get ready to go. And again, definitely a time to make certain that you have enough in the way of, say, battery power, and also knowledge up here that will help you get ready to go for everything out there. That's going to be one of the best things you can possibly do. More, of course, coming up on my Facebook page where we're taking a look at World Water Week. Millions of people around the world don't have clean water. If you'd like to see what the United Nations is doing, they've got tons of things available out there that you can participate in where you are to help spread the word about that. My Twitter page is going to be very active in the next couple of days, keeping an eye on things, and that's at twitter.com slash aonic underscore or WREG3. Visit my Facebook or my YouTube channel. Uh, just go ahead and search for Austinonic Meteor or AMS Meteorologist. I'll be there as well. And of course, we'll have tons more coming up bright and early tomorrow morning. A special update on Talkback Live on AM730. That'll be bright and early at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, tune in on AM730 throughout the Memphis metro area. If you can't tune in, uh, drop by their website, talkbacklivenetwork.org, and you can listen on the computer and find out more information there. If you'd like to know more about what the actual forecast is from the Storm Tracker Center, Storm Tracker 3S Center, uh, in the News Channel 3 Center downtown, this is the forecast that's available at wreg.com slash weather, and you can find out more details available there. Uh, everybody had some great questions tonight. Looks like everybody's starting to drop off, so we'll go ahead and wrap up of this forecast for later on tonight. A lot is going to be changing in the next 24 hours with this forecast and what may happen. Again, this is something you want to pay attention to, especially watching News Channel 3 will help you keep up to date on what is happening here. Again, questions, concerns, comments, again, you can get us through this website and my email address a little bit farther up there in the blue bar, austin.onic at wreg.com. Have a plan, get things ready to go tonight, have your phone charged, batteries for the weather radio, knowing where you are and what's going on and keeping track of the weather so it doesn't sneak up on you. You've seen those things that say, the storm struck without warning. Well, that really can't happen anymore if you stay ready to go. And that's going to be one of the best things that you can possibly do to make sure that you and your kids stay safe out there. One of the best, and your entire family, your place of work, your place of worship, wherever it is, now's the time to get ready and to make sure you know what's happening. Never ever a time for panic. Always a time for getting ready to go and being prepared. That's the Boy Scout marching song. I'm an, e I'm an Eagle Scout, so that right there is kind of grained into everything. Marilyn Pang, well, thanks for watching from Senatobia. And Nathaniel Evans, thank you very much for stopping on by. We'll have another update on this, hopefully tomorrow morning, if the tinfoil sticks to the receiver. And more details as well with News Channel 3's Todd Demers. He'll be coming up bright and early on News Channel 3 Daybreak, so stay tuned for more on that. Live and direct from House Onyx, I'm meteorologist Austin Onyx. Stay tuned for more with News Channel 3 throughout the course of the evening. Will you come over here for a second?
I've got a shorty that wants to play, but he, she doesn't want to be on camera. All right, stay tuned for more of News Channel 3 up to date on News Channel 3 at 10 with Jim Jaggers. And of course, Todd Demers has more on News Channel 3 Daybreak tomorrow morning. Thanks for joining us for the latest edition of our weather blog, Weather Overtime, on Wednesday evening.